Can everyone hear me okay? Awesome. Yeah, this has been a process, but it's been fun. All right, awesome. So hi, everyone. My name is um, Asta Kalbag, and I currently work at Facebook. What I do is something that uh, what we call marketing science, which is like kind of connecting the art and science between understanding effectiveness of um, advertising and like marketing spends and helping businesses grow and understand um, how much they're growing. So trying to understand what's the real value that we're driving um, in terms of advertising. So that's just a quick brief on me. And I just want to share a bit about um, my journey so far before I go into all of the sexy stuff about measurement. Uh, so I've been living in Singapore for um, about 10 years now. So I graduated from a local university here called SMU, which is Singapore Management University. Um, and then I did a few pretty cool gigs um, within like technology in general. So in growth and digital marketing. So I started at Skyscanner, then I moved to Uber. Long story short, Uber sold its business to Grab. So I got a job at Facebook and now I'm at Facebook. Um, so it's been, it's been a pretty exciting story. And today I actually want to touch upon some of my learnings from across. So it's not specifically about stuff that I've learned at Facebook. It's been the things that I've learned as a marketer um, as I've grown within many different roles. And then two things that I actually wanted to highlight, which are quite close to my heart as well. Um, so the first is uh, when I was at university, I started a blog about marketing, which is now read in um, a lot of countries, like over 100 countries. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I'm very excited and passionate about sharing and being involved in the industry and in the community. Uh, and then that interest and excitement like, actually led me up to starting the SMU marketing alumni group as well. So I basically just try and like connect people and like meet people and understand um, all the exciting stuff that's happening in the industry, for example, right now when we're talking about blockchain. I just feel like it's just so dynamic and there's so much changing. Um, and it's just awesome to like be involved and just know what's happening. So that's just a brief introduction about me. So today I'm going to talk about two very simple things, right? One is I'm going to talk about three tragedies that I feel currently exist in our industry. Um, and I think like any tragic story, like, you know, oh my god, this is so bad, like there's always like a silver lining. And that's what I call the North Star, right? So like, what is it that I believe is something that we should all kind of work towards? And what is like that light like, or like that North Star that I believe like is already in motion and how I think we should get all, um, I guess, up to speed with it and get on the same journey together. Right? Awesome. Sounds good? Cool. All right. So first, the three tragedies, right? So tragedy number one um, is the tragedy of the click. So I think in digital marketing in general, like we just, we just have this obsession with like measuring everything, which is awesome because that's kind of my job as well. But in a lot of ways, like as a marketer, I feel like it's also something that I think is a bit tragic because sometimes we just get like so obsessed with clicks and click through rates and like, you know, like this click got me this and this click got me this. And I actually feel like if you take a step back and then you question yourself and you're like, okay, well, if clicks are everything, then how do we kind of like, how do we understand the value of exposure, right? So the truth of our industry today is as we all know it, right? Like let's face the truth, like most people don't click on ads, right? So like, what are we supposed to do about it? Like, should we just get in a room and like cry about it? Or um, do we just understand like the broader dynamic, right? And so the question that I wanted to ask everyone is, well, what is the value of an exposure? So do we really need to be that obsessive about clicks all the time and be that obsessive about click-through rates? Or do we actually start to care a little bit more about understanding what's the value of, expo of an exposure? What is the value of a view? What is the value of attention? What is the value of someone seeing your ad, consuming your content? And that really begs the question, right? Like, I think in digital, just because we can measure so many things, we think that nothing else is important. And that, to me, like, makes me question, right? Like, we can't measure a lot of things in the offline world. We can't measure out of home. But that doesn't mean that we believe as marketers that that doesn't have any impact. So I think the first big tragedy that I, would, that I wanted to really highlight is 
the tragedy of the click, right? Like our over obsession with like understanding clicks. And I'll talk through some of the other tragedies that I feel currently exist in our industry. So that'll take me to, um, you know, we talked about click through rates. Um, and I think one of the things before I go on to like the second and third tragedy is, you know, I think a lot of us are making so many like decisions based on what a very small non-representative sample of people are doing. And when I say small non-representative sample, what I mean is, let's say your click-through rates at the moment are like, I don't know, like 0 0.5, 1%, 2%. Maybe if you're gold, 5%. But you want to start to question if that like 1% is really representative of your audience. Like, is that 1% of population really representative of your consumers or the prospective consumers that you have? And most likely, that answer is no, because the people who are most likely trying to go after are maybe not even clicking on your ads, right? So try to understand, like, don't, I think, the, my recommendation to everyone um, and to myself many times is like, let's keep some of this in check. Like, I think it's great to measure and understand a lot of the impact that we're driving, but let's not get obsessed and make decisions based on a group of people who's not representative of the entire audience, right? Like, if your sample's not really, um, you know, giving you enough insight about the entire population, then your decisions are probably not gonna be ideal either. Right? So that's the tragedy of the click. The second tragedy is, um, you know, I think it's our, it's our favorite topic and something that people talk about a lot, but more and more, like, this continues to affect us and impact us, right? Which is like the, tra the tragedy of the cookie. And, you know, we, we all know this. Like, I'm not saying something that is like, you know, that no one has heard of before when it comes to understanding cookies, but the thing is, right, like as mobile is really like penetrating our lives and as most of us just don't even like own slash use a desktop, we realize that a lot of the measurement that's currently built in the digital advertising ecosystem is really, um, I think, just not doing the job anymore, right? So like cookies, for example, were like built for the desktop era. And I mean cross-device, like, we all talk about this so much. We see this with, like, the way we behave and our friends behave and all of this. And we realize that, you know, everyone is owning multiple devices. We're, like, you know, watching TV on one and, like, browsing on our phones or, like, vice versa, like, three devices, five devices. And while all of this is amazing from a user experience, I think that measurement has not caught up, right? So, like, Cookies are still used as a way for us to measure across devices and try to understand patterns of user behavior. But unfortunately, um, I think that's just the tragedy of, of today, right? Like, which is the tragedy of the cookie. Um, and I think the thing with cookies is that I think they, they could have worked well in the past, but we are, as an industry, like, we're struggling and, like, desperate for a new solution. So cookies were actually built with the, we, they were built for desktop. So they were built with the ability only to tr like drop something in your browser and just be able to track um, behavior and usage on desktop. So it was really not built with the capability to track across devices, even though user behavior has far out um, done or has been ahead of just the way people measure in the industry today. And I think the third tragedy that I want to talk about is um, the, something that I think is quite close to my heart. So everyone here, I think, has heard about a lot of people like throw this term like last click and like, oh, last click is so bad and all of that. And yeah, I mean, I think one of the most overused words, as controversial as this might be, is attribution, which is are like, oh my god, like, well, what about your attribution model? What about my attribution model? You're on last click, I feel so bad for you, uh, blah, 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 blah. And I think we need to like take a step back and try to really understand what is it that we're trying to solve for, right? Like when you're trying to understand the effectiveness of your investments in different marketing channels, what is it that you are actually trying to get at and how are you gonna get there, right? 
So we know that last click is pretty bad and like, yeah, it sucks. But the truth is, what are you going to do about it, right? In the sense that no one can really like stitch impression level data together. So if, you're, if you come to me and you tell me like, oh, we have this like great attribution model or like someone like built it or like someone's working on it or like someone in the US is building it, I will be a bit cautious about it because I guess in, in theory and in summary, that data doesn't exist. Like no one person really has that data to be able to say that at you viewed this here, you viewed that here, and hence I could tell you that I will give equal weight to every channel or like some channels will get more weightage, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So like these two things like really make me like take a step back and I'm like, well, I don't even know like the authenticity of your model because the data itself is bad, right? So um, I guess in summary, I would say like these three things, right? Like thinking about like cookie, thinking about the click, thinking about the last click are in my opinion, like the three defining tragedies of the digital marketing industry today. Um, and I believe that there is a better way, right? Like there has to be a better way where if what you're trying to measure is real business outcome, if what you're trying to measure is what is the true impact of the marketing dollars that you're investing in many different channels, then there has to be a better way. And it cannot be based on, let's say, like correlations. We need to find a good way to understand if I do X, then this leads to Y. And so the word that is used now more and more in the industry is a word that's called incrementality. Have any of you guys heard this word being used at all? Can I just get a show of hands? No, yeah. OK, one, one. So incrementality, right? Like, and what is incrementality? And why do I personally believe that this is the North Star metric that we should be assessing all our marketing investments on, right? And I think before I go into like explaining this, and I'm happy to answer more and more questions about it, but you know, we've all heard this before, right? Like the media landscape is very fragmented, blah, blah, blah. Like we're everywhere. There's just so many channels, so much exposure, et cetera, right? And therefore, we can't really use correlations anymore. So in the past, we tried to understand the value that we were driving across channels by understanding, like doing, like building models, right? So like there was something that we call like mixed media models where we would see like what's your spend and what's the impact on sales and try to make some assumptions based on correlations. But now, because there are so many channels and so many people on so many devices, you cannot make, um, I guess, confident assumptions because there's just so much happening, right? So, so we need to kind of move away from that model and move away from thinking about investments in terms of correlation and try to understand like causal impact. So the summary of that is if I invest X dollars in a channel, what is that bringing me in terms of sales? If I invest Y dollars in B channel, what is that bringing me in terms of sales, right? And now measurement is starting to progress through incrementality measurement to understand how we can really prove and understand the value of our marketing investments, right? So in some, in, I guess in summary of like what digital does today, right? It kind of like brings back a lot of different channels, all that can be done on one platform. So for example, digital for, um, can be based um, and used to actually uh, build awareness or sales, right? So we already know that like you can run a lot of brand campaigns, you can do like a lot of like what we call like direct response or like click to buy, but you can also do like pretty like deep like one-to-one -one interactions, right, through digital. So like let's say through Messenger or like through like sales solutions, et cetera, like you are going pretty deep in a one-is-to-one -one relationship and you're also going pretty deep on like things like promotion, right? Like promotion was something that only existed like in store, et cetera. But all of this together now can be done on digital. So can't use correlations anymore. Media landscape is fragmented and digital as a channel is pretty versatile. All of this comes to understanding, okay, fine. So like how do we measure impact? And incrementality measures causal impact. So we moved away from correlations and we're trying to understand um, causation, and I'll like walk you guys through um, 
the model and like how you actually look at like control versus expose. But in, in summary, what is incrementality, right? And what you're trying to do is you're understanding the difference in behavior when people are exposed to advertising versus people who are not exposed. So in like very simple terms, let's say a group of people, um, like let's say 10 people see your ad, and like a group of 10 people don't see your ad. And then you're trying to see like if the 10 people who saw your ad like purchase like, I don't know, like 20 things, 20 like shoes, and a group of people who did not see your ads purchase 10 shoes, then the incremental impact that you're driving is the 10 additional shoes that would have not come if you didn't invest in that particular channel, right? So it's like understanding what's the impact of like control versus exposed. And what this really does is, um, I think incrementality as a measurement is something that first of all, I think every single marketer should be talking about and like questioning um, the channels that you're working with to see and understand if that channel is actually driving any revenue. So from my experience uh, from the past as well, um, we started to test like different channels and we tried to like understand like if this channel did not exist, would my sales have still been the same, right? So in theory, like if I wasn't spending like X number of dollars on a particular channel, would my organic sales like go up or my sales would still come or not? If my sales go down, I know that there's some value that that channel is driving, right? So in this example, as I was saying before, you're looking at an exposed group who like sees ads versus a control group who doesn't see any ads and any lift as we, as we call it, is basically like the incremental impact that that particular advertising campaign is driving for your business. So I think the first check that needs to be done is, are all of your channels incremental? And then the second thing that you go to is understanding and optimizing your budgets based on some of the insights that you get. But a lot of times you'll actually find that a lot of channels that you're spending a lot of money on, they actually might not be driving that much value for your business in the first place. So, which is why I think I wanted to introduce this concept to you. And I think more and more like sophisticated advertisers are like getting um, more on board with it and like asking a lot of questions around incrementality. And I think from my perspective, like even when I was like at Skyscanner and Uber, like this was something that we were trying to like drive at. And now that I'm at Facebook, like we have like the measurement, for example, to actually understand it. So. Even like within, let's say, if you're trying to understand this for Facebook specifically, you can actually go into your ads manager account and like look at test and learn and like set up some of this measurement so that you are having a holdout group or a group of people who don't see your ads and then try to see what is like any incremental impact that that advertising is drawing. So if you guys have more questions about that setup specifically, happy to answer that. But moreover, I just want to draw this as like a, as a general concept that I think all advertisers and marketers should be focused on understanding in terms of their marketing investments. Cool. So I think just so that we're on the same, um, same page, right? Like, I think I've kind of given you guys the answers, but I just want to make sure that we're asking the right questions. And when I think about what is the right questions, I think the first thing is trying to understand what is the incremental impact of the dollars that you are spending, right? And then the second question is, um, sometimes I think people don't, people take it badly, but it's like, would your users have converted anyways? So let's say if you did not put any dollars in marketing, would they have just converted organically? And you need to be able to answer this question because that forms your baseline. If users would have bought your product or like converted anyways, then you need to start thinking about what is the additional value that you're driving as a, as a marketing um, org or a marketing investment or like what certain channels or activities that you're doing is adding value or not. And I think as marketers, what we need to do is like optimize that value add that we're having in terms of different channels, activities and investments that we make over and about the baseline, over and about the users who would have converted anyways without advertising, right? So I guess um, if you didn't gather much about this, ask me questions after, but I just wanted to kind of shout out on what I believe like as an industry we should care about the most and understand that incrementality is really like 
truly the only way um, that you'll be able to measure like the impact of your marketing investments. And that is really because you're, you're trying to understand like causal impact. And if you're not measuring causal impact and you're just using correlations to make your marketing decisions on investments, then I would highly like question that and I would encourage everyone to um, start talking to their like publishers and vendors about incrementality and I'm sure they will be um, answers that you will figure out together. So with that, uh, I just want to say thank you and um, yeah, maybe I'll open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. So we've got some time, five minutes or so for questions. So this is your opportunity to ask our science expert from Facebook any questions at all on what you've just seen or anything at all about Facebook. Um, I don't know where the catch box is. Is it down there somewhere? It's on that table there. So hands up if you've got a quick question. A stunned audience, last chance. Everyone wants to keep their questions to themselves. Do you have a question down there, or are you just holding the box? <laughs> okay, we have one question. Hi. So, um, with Facebook as one of the biggest ad platforms today, how do you define incrementality for your clients who are putting up their uh, business on Facebook? Yeah, so um, I think. First of all, I think it's the need of the hour, so it's understanding why this measurement is really important and it's really important now. Um, secondly, I think in terms of the way we measure it, um, we actually like set up what we call, like for clients who want to test incrementality, we have the ability to set up a holdout. And when we say holdout, it's a control group or a group of people who are not exposed to advertising. So in the auction, for example, like if you are about to get exposed to advertising, like we will set up a control, which is a holdout, and then your ads will go to like what we define as an exposed group or everyone else. And based on that, um, by the end of the study, what you can see is like incremental impact or cost per incremental, number of incremental conversions. And what that gives the advertiser is the ability to answer the question if they were not investing on Facebook as a channel, what are the total number of conversions that would have not happened? So, and, and I really believe, like, as marketers, that's such an important question to answer because as much as we want to believe that everything that we do, like, drives value, like, people might have just gone on your website and they were going to convert anyways. Like, yeah, you serve them an ad and that's great, but really, did that drive much value? So that's the first, which is, like, answering the question of, what is the impact that you would have had, right? Or what is the impact that that campaign had? And then the second thing is to like, is that we work with our clients to like help them optimize based on, let's say, incrementality. So like, what are some of the activities that you can do more of? Like, what are some of the audiences that you can go after, for example? Or like, what are some of the activities that you're spending on currently? Like, you could focus less on. And I think the more and more like we start having these conversations. Um, the better it is because that's when you're driving like more and more value in terms of like business outcomes, i.e., um, I don't know, like website purchases or like offline sales, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think as marketers, like as we become like more sophisticated in terms of measurement and digital, we are becoming more and more accountable for bottom line sales figures. And the faster that we understand, like if I'm doing X, it impacts why, I think the better position we are in terms of demonstrating value that we're driving for the business. One last question down the front. Um, hi, uh, thank you very much. Um, I think a very interesting uh, presentation. Um, my question um, is, um, is this tool incrementality measurement available, currently available in the ads manager, yes. or do we have to request to have that control um, from Facebook? Yeah, so um, I guess for those of you guys who have like managed accounts or uh, managed campaigns on Facebook, uh, and, I'll, and I'll just briefly talk about it, but if you have more questions, I can show you later. But in a sense, uh, when you're in, within ads manager, uh, you have a tab which is called test and learn. Have you guys seen that? Has anyone seen that before? Okay. Anyway, so there's a tab that's called test and learn in which you can set up something that's called a conversion lift. 
So you set that up, and that basically will, you'll define like a holdout level or a percentage of holdout. And then you'll be able to um, generate a report to see increment, a gauge on incrementality. So like cost per incremental and number of incremental conversions. But to answer your question, like yes, it's available um, for everyone. And it's, it's not like a, 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 that you need to be on a particular whitelist. And I think, um, to be honest, like if, even my opinion, like as, out, like as someone who's not particularly tied to Facebook, like I really just believe like we need to understand incrementality. Right, like as marketers, like we, I mean, yes, like Facebook does provide that solution, but we just need to know that for every single channel and then compare our investments on different channels and optimize our budget decisions accordingly. Yeah. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen, put your, oh, is that a hand up, is it? Yes. Is it a quick question? <laughs> right. I'll okay. make it a quick answer. Go on then, quick question, <laughs> quick answer, that's what we love. <laughs> Um, so my question is just this incrementality, sorry, features, so you say it's available on Facebook, is it particular to Facebook or other platforms or they're So incrementality it? as a model is like just a measurement model. It's like a way to measure something. So you will have to basically like check with different vendors to see like how they read and measure and will help you with incrementality. But most definitely, I think every publisher slash partner, like big at least, would know um, incrementality and the lift study like methodology. So I think you'll have to just explore that about how they go about testing it. 